Welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much. Music with Todd Ledbetter, and I'm glad you're here to join us today. We have a special full album. We're going to do some Rolling Stones. Now, of course, we all know and love the Rolling Stones, mostly. Uh, not everybody loves the Rolling Stones. Uh, lots of controversy. Who's better in Rolling Stones? The Beatles? I don't know. I like them both. Um, I've always been more of a Beatles fan. When I listen to Beatles records, <clears throat> I love Beatles records. Like I've said before, I'm a album kind of guy. Now, the Rolling Stones have a ton of songs, a ton of songs, and I know a lot of them. But um, interestingly enough, I have not owned a lot of their music uh, over the years. Now, I will say, looking at their discography, it's loaded. It's loaded with live albums, uh, especially in the recent years. Um, they started in 1960. Well, they started in about uh, early 60s, but in 64, they released their first album and the Beatles were on top of the charts. Um, and they were doing primarily blues covers. Basically, that's all they did. Uh, but back to the albums that I owned, um, I owned Some Girls. I bought that album in 1978 when it came out. And uh, I liked some of the songs on it at, at through the first few listens. But over time, I learned to love every single song uh, because a lot of the songs weren't what I was used to of the Rolling Stones hearing some of their radio hits and not understanding some of the other things uh, that they had done, uh, you know, like painted black and things like that was real catchy and different. But then when you hear, uh, I don't know, they're just, they're very diverse. They're bluesy, but they're also very diverse. They even got into like disco type stuff in the six, uh, in the eighties, which um, I learned to like as well. Uh, not quite disco, -y, but sort of playing off of the popularity of disco at the time. Okay, so having said some girls, um, some of the other albums that I'm probably somewhat familiar with some of the song, well, probably all of the albums I'm familiar with some, some of the songs. I'm just not seeing. Oh, yeah, the other album that I had was Bridges to Babylon in 1997. I didn't listen to it that much, frankly. I liked a couple of songs, but it, it wasn't something that really caught me and became one of uh, like a you know, um, a playlist type uh, CD. I believe I had it on CD in 1997 even. I think I got it for a gift from my wife perhaps. Um, so in, so I probably heard that album all the way through, um, but, but I'm not familiar with it. But uh, like I said, I'm familiar with a lot of, a lot of Rolling Stone stuff, but the amount of material that they have that I haven't heard is really fairly staggering. Um, the Rolling Stones, they formed in 1962 and they've been active for six decades and they're one of the most popular enduring bands of the rock era. Now I'm reading this from Wikipedia. In the early 60s, the Rolling Stones pioneered the gritty, rhythmically driven sound that came to define hard rock. And their first stable lineup consisted of vocalist Mick Jagger, multi-instrumentalist uh, multi Brian Jones, guitarist Keith Richards, bassist Bill Wyman, and drummer Charlie Watts. During the formative years, Jones was the primary leader. He assembled the band, he named it, he drove their sound and image. And after Andrew Oldman became the group's manager in 1963, he encouraged them to write their own songs. And Jagger and Richards became the primary creative force behind the band alienating Jones, who had developed a drug addic addiction and interfered with his ability to contribute meaningfully. So those are kind of things that we know. Now, I've done, uh, I've gone through some cursory, uh, cursory sort of exploration of some of these albums. And what I was interested in finding out was uh, uh, the writers of the song. So it says that Jagger and uh, Richards became the primary writers but not for a few albums, not for a few albums. From what I can see, um, most of their early albums from, you know, 64, which by the way is the year I was born, if I didn't mention that, 
uh, all the ways, I don't know, I think till about, I think they had like a one song on a couple of albums and then they started in the mid 60s writing most all of their songs between Richardson and uh, um, Jagger. So that's kind of interesting, but they were pretty, uh, you know, they have albums, 64, uh, two albums in 64, then they have two albums, three albums in 65, th no, four albums in 65, uh, and then 66. So, and I'm looking at Spotify here, and it's a little confusing because they've got like multiple albums. They've got the UK versions, and then they've got the American market versions. And from what I understand, they've taken the UK versions, uh, and like a couple of different albums, and they put them into one album for the American market. So, I'm going to do my best, but my intention is to go through the entire studio catalog of the Rolling Stones. Um, so if there's about 25 studio albums that that I think I read on Wikipedia, that seems about right, 25 or 30. Um, so that's going to, if I do one album a day, that'll take a month. Who knows if I can get that done? Who knows? But we're going to start with the very first album. We might as well you know, what, what better place to start than from the beginning. Um, I do like some of this blues stuff. I like, I like uh, early blues music, and this was real influential in, uh, you know, in, in England. Uh, the Led Zeppelin and just so many, you know, the Beatles, they all started out with this, this stuff. And it's pretty, you know, well known that it was a big... Uh, resurgence of blues music american blues came to uh, uh england and they just ate it up they just ate it up and they really kind of revived it re retooled it and made some of their own sort of sounds i mean led zeppelin's kind of one of the, their early albums are pretty well known for sort of retooling some of these old blues classics We'll read a little bit more about the Rolling Stones as far as what Wikipedia has to say, but we might as well just go ahead and get right into the music. Um, we're going to start with the Rolling Stones, 1964. It's got 12 songs and it's 32 minutes and 56 seconds. So these are two minute plus songs. Uh, there's one song that's over two minutes. It's three minutes and nine seconds. And it's the very last song, Walking the Dog. Okay, so we're going to try to play it off of... Uh, of, uh, we're going to try to play it off of uh, YouTube so we have like a picture of them. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and get started with that. And so here we are, the Rolling Stones' very first album, the Rolling Stones, 1964. Sound like they sped up a little bit.
have a feeling we're going to recognize a lot of these songs from, you know, their early albums. Being famous blues songs. that song don't you know That one sounded kind of out of tune, didn't it? Now, I know Mick Jagger's a pretty good harmonica player. I believe that's him, and even in the early days, he still had the harmonica thing going on. I'm 
よ。
All right. Hey, so already, there we are. Well, I'm a king, babe. Hang on a second. First six songs already. Um, yeah, so, boy, that's pretty rough. Uh, if you ask me, you know, you, you can hear their mistakes. You can hear their limited ability in their uh, playing. I will say that Bill Wyman is kicking butt there and... You know, Charlie Watts is keeping a strong beat. Uh, Mick Jagger sounds really good. The guitars don't sound that great. You know, they're they're sometimes out of tune. Uh, the leads are very rudimentary, very, 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 uh, you know, beginnerish. And of course, they were. They were so young back then, so young. Uh, like like. Um, l- like I said, this whole blues stuff was very, very popular. Um, I just wanted to talk about real quick the actual writers of these songs. So Route 66 was what we heard very beginning. And that was credited to Troop. And I'm not sure what Troop is, but I've heard that song, of course, many times. I Just Want to Make Love to You is credited to Dixon, probably Willie Dixon. Honestly, I do was written by, uh, let's see, Abner and Reed. And I'm just doing this because I just want to note that, that these are not songs that Jagger and um, Richards wrote, even though they were kind of known as the McCartney Lennon of the, you know, of the Stones. So then uh, Mona was written by McDaniel that kind of had like a, hand jive sort of feel um now i've got a witness instrumental was written by let's see whoops push the wrong button written by nanker nanker fledge and i've seen his name come up a few times and i think they've actually written songs i think their songs credited to him and uh uh Richards and Jagger together, interestingly enough. And then Little by Little was the last song we heard written by Nanker Fledge and Phil Spector. Okay, so interesting. Uh, The group, uh, they played their first show, Build as the Rolling Stones, because they were called like something else, a blues something, uh, blues boys or something like that. And then they kind of came out of uh, another that band or something like that. And then they these guys kind of all kind of came together and joined into what was now called the Rolling Stones on July 12th, 1962 was their first show at the Marquee Club in London. Uh, all the time, the band consisted of Jones, Jagger, Richard Stewart and Taylor. Uh, Bill Wyman auditioned for the role as bass guitarist at the pub in Chelsea on December 7th, 1962, and was hired as a successor to Dick Taylor, as was the original bass player, apparently. So the band uh, was uh, the band was impressed by his instrument, his instrument and his amplifiers, uh, including the Vox uh, AC30. The classic lineup of the Rolling Stones was Charlie Watts on drums, played for the first time in public on Saturday, 12th of January, 1963. So, however, it was not until a gig there on February 2nd, 1963, that uh, that Watts became the Stones' permanent drummer. So, shortly after that, the band began their first tour of the UK, performing Chicago blues and songs by Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley. In 1963, they were, were finding their musical stride and as well as their popularity. In 64, they beat the Beatles as the number one United Kingdom band in two surveys. The band's name was changed shortly after that uh, from their first gig to, uh, f- let's see, the change shortly after their first gig to the Rolling Stones. The group then acting manager, Giorgio Golm- Golmski, secured a Sunday afternoon residency at the Crawdaddy Club in Richmond, London in February 1963. So interesting stuff. You know, a lot of early member changes until they got to sort of their early permanent lineup 
1963, the Rolling Stones signed uh, Andrew Oldham as their manager. He had been uh, directing them to by his previous clients, the directed to them by his previous clients, the Beatles. So because Oldham was only 19 and had not reached the age of uh, majority, they call it, uh, he was also younger than everyone in the band. He could not obtain an agent's license or sign any contract without his mother co-signing. By necessity, he joined the booking agent, Eric Easton, to secure record financing and assistant booking venues. So uh, Golmsky, who had Golm Golmsky, who had written agreements with the band, was not consulted. Okay, so there's some already some stuff going on there. Um, let's go ahead and finish listening to the last six songs, and uh, maybe we'll get back into some more of their early history. But some of the stuff I didn't know. You know, you you kind of know what you know about about the uh, the history of the Rolling Stones, but not everything is uh, is out there all the time. So let's go ahead and continue on with "I'm a King Bee." Well, I'm a King Bee. <laughs> Buzzing around your hive Well, I'm a king bee, baby Buzzing around your hive Yeah, I can make honey, baby Let me come inside Well, I'm a king bee Want you to be my queen Well, I'm a king bee, baby Want you to be my queen Together we can make honey The world has never seen Well, but a while King B was written by Moore. Oh, More clapping. Obviously Chuck Berry.
All right, they're doing it. They're trying. They're playing the most rudimentary elements of like the blues riffs. So, some timing issues, of course. Now this is the first Richards and Mick Jagger song on the album. Ah. Again, I want your love again. I know you find it hard to reason with me, but this time it's different. Richard's backing vocals, love him. Said it through before you walked out on me before. I tried to tell you, but you didn't want to know. This time you're different, and determined to go. This is the longest song on the album, over four minutes, four minutes, five seconds. The only one written by the Stones. You can tell they were proud of that song. There was a lot of energy in there, especially vocally. But it's funny how they make mistakes and they just plow right through them. Now this one's called Can I Get Away With This?
Written by B. Holland, Dozer, and E. Holland. No guitar, just piano. You can make it if you try. You can make it if you try. You can make it if you try. Written by Jarrett. Sometime you had to fall. Don't you know sometime you want to cry? Don't it make you feel so bad sometimes you want to lay down and die? Yeah, yeah, you can make it if you try. Go bump, 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 bump. All right, walking the dog. Baby bag dressed in black, silver buttons all down her back. Written by Thomas.
Well, there you go. The Rolling Stones' very first album. I mean, that was rough. I mean, really, if you like critically listen to that, uh, mus musician, excuse me, the musicianship was rough. Uh, of course, the recording back then was also rough. You know, they had what stereo that was it so they're like dumping tracks to the left side and to the right side or however they were doing it um yeah there's a <laughs> but you know there's a lot to um you know mention about their energy that definitely had something there you have to admit for sure for sure um let's see i just wanted to I was reading a little bit. Oh, yeah. In 1962, the Blues Boys, that was the, what they were calling themselves. So um, talked about when they first played. Uh, oh, their first gig. Yeah. Anyways, I don't need to read more of the um, the, <laughs> the Wikipedia stuff. Um, my takeaway from listening to that first album is all those songs have been covered so many times. I've heard versions of most of those songs by a lot of different people. Um, it's interesting how they managed to get one song. I didn't realize that at first. I thought it was a few records later, but maybe it was like for the first few records, they had one song that, that Richards and Jagger wrote. And, uh, but definitely, you know, they had they had an energy and it said that the uh, manager was first. I think it was the Oldham guy. He was trying to make him dress him in suits like on that cover, like the Beatles were back in the day. But then he changed his mind later on and made him uh, that he wanted to kind of promote him as like the bad boys of rock and roll. And that's kind of what we got eventually. Interesting to it's always interesting to hear um you know, the beginnings of, of rock legends, you know, of, of, of a band that, you know, fairly well, you know, I'm not, I'm not super, a super Stones fan. I don't know all their music. I'm, it's like David Bowie, you know, it's like, I know their hits and what gets played on the radio. Once in a while you hear an obscure song. I probably heard one of these songs on the radio at one time or another. Um, like on an oldie station at work or something playing playing a version the stones version of one of these covers but um definitely not something i'm going back to if i want to hear these songs i'm going to go to the original or somebody else that does these songs way better i mean technically their abilities were 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 limited compared to how quickly they grew and how you know they developed it was, they were just kids basically you know so they were so young oh of course you know these days young people can rip they can rip these days but um but there is so many mistakes in this whole album you know just timing issues uh, uh out of tune really really some even even missing the transitions um in, in the blue structure you know not changing but, you know, if you're on the route, it almost doesn't really matter sometimes with the blues, depending on who's doing it. You, it's, you can still blend it in and uh, it's still in key. And there were so many. I mean, in the beginning of uh, with the very what was that song? The very beginning of I think it was You Can Make It If You Try. I don't think it was Walking the Dog. I think it was You Can Make It If You Try. I mean, they did like the first line and it was it was just so timing wise was just off you know slightly but noticeably i thought uh funny 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 but richard uh but uh jagger sounds great you know boy he was probably even though jones was kind of the leader at the time and i'm not sure sure who's playing the leads at that point if it's jones or if it's richards um but root but basically they're playing bare minimum of those blues licks you know they don't finish them you know, they're, you know, it's just what they can handle at the time, I guess, which I understand. It's, I'm not criticizing them for it at all. I think it's a pretty dang impressive what they started with and how they developed. Um, 
it's just fun. It's just interesting to hear. You know, this was their record. This was their debut. Mostly all cover blues tunes. And frankly, musicianship was was, you know, they're just like hanging on by a thread. Bill sounded great. Uh, and of course, the drums as simply as, you know, Charlie Watts has always kind of been known in the Stones as a simple drummer in in some ways. Um, but he's got some iconic drum stuff, you know, and, pl and plus he was a real jazz aficionado, too. He had his own jazz group. So, you know, he can do more. But they were young here. I think I think he was the oldest in the group. Uh, Charlie Watts. Not sure, but I, I think so. But uh, so he had another extra year on him or something. Interesting, interesting uh, journey. I think we're going to be on just kind of hear the development. I mean, certainly when you get a few albums in, you start getting some of their big hits. And when they really start taking off, it's, it's a marked difference. And especially when they start writing their own songs, um, they just take off. You know, they I don't know. They, I guess they didn't. I heard a story where they act where Keith and 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 Mick actually, you know, they were friends with Lennon and McCartney, and they asked asked him, "How do you write songs?" You know, and so whatever, whatever that that conversation went, you know, they just s sat down and started writing songs together, and, and they have written some of the most classic, iconic rock songs in rock and roll history. Frankly, you know, you, you have to admit that not not these, but uh, but later on in their career, it's just amazing. These guys were. I don't know if the, how many takes they did. I'm sure a lot of these were like all one take in the studio and in minimal overdubbing uh, because they just didn't have the capabilities in recording. But anyways, let me know what you think about about this you know am I being rude by saying it was rudimentary and their skills are are limited I don't mean to be rude I'm just you know it's just an obvious truth it's an obvious truth that's not to say that they never developed because obviously they did they had they've had six decades you know they're great I love it you know they're one of the biggest they're the if not the biggest rock and roll band in history probably um and so much drama, you know, different members. And we'll see if we can get into that and the member changes as these different albums come up. But uh, let me know what you think of this album and, and what, what your impressions are, especially if, see, I, I was born in 64 when this came out. So some of you might be a little older and remember this when it came out. And what was your experience? Uh, was there the hype with this, like there was the Beatles in 64? Or did it take them a couple more years to kind of, uh, gain some traction here in the United States with that. I, I don't know for sure. Um, maybe we'll read some more of the Wikipedia during some of these other albums and see, see if we can glean some information from there. But um, like I said, I've, it's, I'm not saying that I've never heard the Rolling Stones before. Obviously I have. and But I haven't, like I said, I've only owned two albums. And one of them I'm most familiar with is Some Girls. What was that, 78? And then the Babylon, whatever that was, 90s um i have barely listened to it i went through it a couple of times i found a couple songs i, I listened to a few times and and then i just lost interest in it it just didn't ca capture uh you know my attention but uh that the some girls albums is is to me is an iconic album and a lot of people talk about uh some of their earlier albums being iconic which i know they are um uh, Let's see, such as, uh, uh, you know, Sticky Fingers or Goat's Head Soup, um, Beggar's Banquet, Let It Bleed. Um, I'm not sure what this, their Satanic Majesty, that one's kind of a weird one. Their Satanic Majesty's Request. Somebody's going to have to, when we get to that, we'll have to talk about that and find out what's going on there because... Uh, that's kind of weird as far as <laughs> naming an album. Let's see. Uh, I was just looking to see what was on that one. Oh, I don't know. That's what, they got, they've got these albums and they're just so many like versions. There's the stereo remix and then there's the mono. And it's hard for me to know being so unfamiliar where the album starts and where it stops. 
But uh, I don't even know if that album we just listened to even had any hits off of it. Did it get any radio play? I didn't recognize like really anything that might have been a hit for them. I don't know. Back in the day. All right. Well, let me know what you think. Thanks for hanging out with me for this full album review. Interesting to to uh, hear for sure. And uh, it's not really my thing as far as like music I would go back to listen to, like I said. But later on, I'm, I'm looking forward to some of their other albums that really start kicking in when when Jagger and, and uh, Richards are the writers. Yeah. So anyways, kind of repeating myself now I'm looking forward to those and maybe I'll be surprised in the next few albums maybe I will but uh, I was surprised with this one it was it was pretty bad really um even though the songs are classic and iconic you know no no uh no disrespect to the to the songs and the writers of those songs um, but I thought the one that they did themselves was probably was real it was a good song they it was kind of derivative of it wasn't even bluesy it was more derivative of a, like american pop at the time uh to to me almost almost 50s ish some of the cha chord changes it was a little bit 50s so they were kind of pulling from i think that vein when they wrote that song all right guys well thank you very much i appreciate you hanging out with me for our rolling stones exploration uh, there's lots that uh, I'm going to be familiar with, but there's lots that I'm not going to be familiar with. So what I'm really kind of curious is what you guys have to say about it and what your take is on each album. So let me know down in the comments and we will talk to you in future videos and I'm uh, looking forward to the next one. Bye bye.